Applying for a mortgage and the general buying process can be quite daunting and it's tough to know where to start, particularly with all of the criteria changes that's happened in recent months. In this video, I'll run you through some tips to help you with the mortgage application process, including what you can do to prepare yourself before you go out looking at properties. Hi, my name's Sam from Rose Hill Financial Services and I'm here to help you with your buying journey. If this is your first time watching, then do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll do my best to bring you useful content each week. So the first question really is whether to go to your bank or building society or whether to go to a mortgage broker. Now there's no harm in going to a bank or a building society and it can be quite an easy place to start when you don't know where to start. That being said, you could go to a bank for a two or three hour meeting just to be told that they're not happy to lend to you. Or you might even be told that they are happy to lend to you, subject to you finding that property, but the property you end up finding might not fit their criteria. So then it's back to the drawing board. Going direct to a bank also means that they can only advise you on their products. Whereas if you go to a mortgage broker, they can discuss lots of different lenders products with you. You could also spend hours on end looking on comparison sites, but where you're self-employed, different lenders will use your income in different ways. So it's tough to know how much exactly certain lenders will lend to you. In all honesty, while a low rate is good because you'll be spending less, it's not the only thing that you should be focusing on. You might find that a flexible product is more suitable for you than the very lowest interest rate. For example, you could get a fixed interest rate with no early repayment charges just to give you that extra bit of flexibility, or you could find a product that offers an offset facility. We'll make another video on an offset facility uh, just because this would be way too long if we get into that right now. Using a great independent mortgage broker can just save you that time and hassle that you'd spend looking for mortgages on your own. So next would be to make sure that you've sorted your finances first before you start going out looking at properties. It makes no sense going out looking at homes if you're not too sure what that maximum budget is or how much it's gonna cost you month on month. Speak to a great broker early in the process and they can discuss with you your maximum loan with certain lenders and they can also talk you through your protection options and your general insurance options, so like your buildings and contents insurance. Your broker can then have an agreement in principle for you, which will put you in a much better position when you come to make an offer on a property. Now you'll need to provide your mortgage broker with certain documents for them to be able to do this and complete a fact find for you. You'll need a proof of ID, so a passport or driving license. You'll need a proof of address, for example, a utility bill. You'll need your proof of income, so if you're self-employed, that will be at least one year is SA302s or tax calculations and their corresponding tax year overview and for limited company directors you'll also need your signed accounts. If you're employed you'll generally need three to six months pay slips along with a P60 ideally. You'll need your bank statements showing your full income and expenditure just so that your broker and lenders can work out your affordability and finally you'll need your proof of deposit which we'll go through in just a moment. A quick note on bank statements it can't be screenshot shots of accounts it must be the full monthly bank statements generally covering the latest three months but it can be more so it will need to show full details including your name address account number sort code and so on so proof of deposit now although this was covered briefly in the last section it does deserve a section of its own lenders will want to see a clear source of funds when you look to apply for a mortgage if the total deposit is coming from your personal savings then it will usually be the latest three to six six month bank statements showing that build up of funds. If the full deposit is coming from the sale of your existing property, then it's best just to gather the memorandum of sale through the estate agent that you're selling through, along with supplying a mortgage statement showing the outstanding mortgage balance that you have. If any part of the deposit is being gifted to you by a family member, for example, then they will need to provide the latest three to six months full monthly bank statements. Again, with bank statements from those gifting funds to you, no details can be blocked out. So it needs to show the account number, sort code, and so on. So you'll need to make sure that anyone gifting you money for your deposit is comfortable sharing this information. There'll also usually be a gifted deposit letter, which will just say that this is a gift to you and not a loan and that the people gifting the deposit have no interest in the property. Your mortgage broker will be able to determine what exactly is required for your proof of deposit. Overall, for your proof of deposit, try and keep things as simple as possible for yourself. It's easier to stick to a small number of accounts rather than spreading the deposit over lots and lots of accounts 
because that can just cause a headache when you're trying to gather all of these documents together. So next up, we'd advise finding a great solicitor very early on in the process too. This will avoid any delays later on in the process and can prevent you getting pressured into using a particular solicitor at the point you come to find a property. I strongly recommend not basing your decision on a solicitor on the price alone. Similarly, as when you're looking for a great mortgage broker, in my opinion, a great solicitor is worth their weight in gold. You don't want to end up proceeding with a solicitor that you just can't get hold of. With a good broker and solicitor in place, you'll be ahead of the game at the point you come to make an offer. So next up, we've got your credit file. Checking your credit file is so important. I can't stress it enough. This should be one of the first steps you take before you look at properties, just to make sure there aren't any nasty surprises that you weren't aware of. Now, I'm not talking about the credit score. I'm talking about the full credit file. A full credit file will have the details that lenders will be looking at before they make a decision on whether or not to lend to you. So this will include any credit commitments or any adverse credit. As a general part of our assessment, we'd always check the full credit file and make you aware of anything that seems out of the ordinary or anything that would flag up to a lender. Now you may have heard of different credit bureaus such as Experian, Equifax and TransUnion. Well, different lenders will use different credit bureaus when assessing your mortgage application. For this reason, we recommend using Check My File, which offers one report covering Equifax, Experian and TransUnion, rather than just one or the other. I've added a link to check my file in the description below. So next up, we have the electoral roll. I can't stress it enough, just make sure that you're on the electoral roll at your current address. The first stage of a mortgage application is the lender's credit check. So to maximize your chances of mortgage success, make sure you're on the electoral roll because that will make it easier for the lenders to find information about you. So next up, we have your assessment of income. Being self-employed, verification of income is not as simple as the latest three months pay slips. Many lenders will wanna see your reported earnings over the latest two to three years or potentially even more. And they'll generally wanna take an average of these earnings if your income has increased year on year. Some may even wanna see projections from a qualified accountant as well, just to make sure that the income is stable going forward. Now, although a longer trading history may open more doors for you in terms of lenders and different products, we do work with lenders that are happy to use your first year's accounts or your latest year's accounts. So there's no need to give up if a particular bank turns you down. If you're a limited company director and you're part of a growing business, then we also work with lenders that will use your company net profits plus your salary rather than your salary and dividend. So if you tend to keep more money in the business and you're worried about your lending, do speak to a good mortgage broker who can explain your options for you. As usually, using company net profits plus your salary gets you a little bit more money than your salary and dividend figures would do. So next up, if you're self-employed, I'd strongly consider using an accountant. Now, although you might be able to get a mortgage without one, having an accountant prepare your accounts will maximize your chances of mortgage success. As mentioned earlier, some lenders might wanna see projections of your following year's income. Now, if this is coming from a qualified accountant, then this will just give the lender more peace of mind and will ensure a smoother application process for you. And if you're a limited company director, then lenders will generally want to see the latest two years signed accounts by a qualified accountant, depending on the number of years accounts that you actually have. So next up, we've got director's loans, assets, and liabilities. For limited company owners, I can't stress enough the importance of your balance sheet. It's so important for your peace of mind, let alone for mortgage purposes, that your assets outweigh your liabilities. If your liabilities outweigh your assets, then you essentially owe more money than you have. So this makes it very difficult for a lender to justify lending to you. In terms of director's loans, you cannot use this as a proof of earned income. This is a loan from yourself to the company, which you've then withdrawn. So this isn't additional earned income, it's simply the company paying you back. Lenders will either want to use your salary and dividend figures, or they'll want to use your company net profits plus your salary. So let's hear from you. Are you looking to apply for a mortgage? Do let me know in the comments. If you'd like any further information as always, feel free to leave me a comment or message me directly and I'll be happy to help. All details are linked in the description below. Before I let you go, I must tell you that as a mortgage is secured against your home, it could be repossessed if you don't keep up the mortgage repayments. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.